All right, so this is the first real, I guess you could say, video part of the documentation series on the Unreal Mod Loader. And basically what this video is about is adding support for a game that doesn't already have support, but how to add support pretty much for almost any Unreal Engine game. Now, I say almost any because, of course, I use patterns, I use, you know, auto detection, stuff like that to try and figure out the internals of a game, but I'm not perfect and nor is my code. There are times where it will fail and there are times where you'll have to make more advanced dot profile files, manually define things like G name, G object, G world, or engine definition type things, but we're not focusing on that right now uh, and I don't know if I will make a video on creating advanced dot profile files because of the fact that is such a basically it requires a lot of reversing knowledge and knowing how to get functions what they look like knowing how to read a PDB and basically that you can't make a video on that if no one if someone doesn't have skill with reversing or any prior experience so I do recommend if what I'm doing in this video doesn't work for you, hit me up on Discord and I will as fast as I can get back to you and I will help you either to set up your profile file or I will make a change to my mod loader to better support that pattern. Uh, my goal is to make the mod loader as good as possible and signature scans are an important part of that. But all of that mumbo jumbo out of the way, this is how to create a basic mod support I guess you could say. Now, the game that we're going to be using overall for this series is a game called Undefeated. I'm using this game because it is free and it is on Steam. So, if you go to Steam, I'll have a link in the description. If you just search up Undefeated, it is a UE 4.16 game. And it is a really good game to understand modding. You could think of it if you have done reversing. You could think of it like the Assault Cube of Unreal Modding, in my opinion. But, I digress, and let's get on to the video. So in your dot profile file, you'll see there's an advanced example game dot profile and a basic game dot profile. Basically, you're going to want basically you're going to want the basically one. So, we're going to click that, but the way that these profiles work is they have to be named the same name as the executable for the game. And I'm not talking about this executable. I'm talking about the binary executable. And the way you figure this out is you have to go into the games folder, not the engine folder, but the games folder. You have to then go into the binaries folder there, Win64, and then you need to click on the exe, right click, rename, and you can just copy the name directly over to the dot profile file. And right there, you've already started the first step. Now, the second step is a, a more of an understanding step. You need to know what engine version the game is on so you know what flags to set in the profile file. So you right-click the EXE, go to Properties, Details. We can see this game is on 4.18.3. That is a good engine version for this series. What we're going to do is we're going to right-click our .profile file, edit with Notepad++. Uh, no, we do not need to keep that. And basically... We're going to set up the flags the way they should be. So, basically, all right, I do realize that I made a mistake right here, but I'm going to fix that, and I'll fix that before you get the, uh, the, you are able to mess with this. So, let's just save that real quick. Back to the actual thing. So, we have this setup file right here, this, you know, profile file. Now, the first thing you want to do is look at the using name pool thing. Now, this gets set to 1 or true, if the game's engine version is 4.23 or higher, you can see this game is 4.18. That is lower, so we don't want this to be turned on. We want this to be turned off. So you can set it to zero or you can delete it, but I'm going to just set it to zero so that we can still have it there and see what we're doing. Now, is using fix chunk, chunk, <laughs> chunk object array. Basically, uh, the global objects were changed on newer Unreal Engine versions. And for versions pretty much 4.19 and up. Now, this game is 4.18, so it doesn't use this chunked array system. What this uses is the older, just normal array system. So you don't want this to be set to 1. You want this to be set to 0. 1 being true, of course, and 0 being false. And I have the little documentation bits here. Now, this fallback function, or I guess you could say more flag than function, you never want to turn this on. You only want to turn this on in extremely rare situations where you cannot find Spawn Actor 
or Spawn Actor is causing an issue and causing the game to crash. And that has happened for one or two games, which is why this feature is here. So unless you're having extreme problems with spawning or more along the lines of it's so confusing to where, like even if you ask me, I can't figure it out, that's when you would turn this on. So almost 100% of the time, ignore this flag, but it's here. And this flag, 99% of the time, you can ignore it too. Basically, so we talked about the F name pool thing, and those of you who don't know, Unreal Engine changed the way their name array works. It's no longer an array in the newer versions. It's an actual name pool. It's no longer using the normal array system, basically. And because of that, it's used differently. It needs a flag so the mod loader knows what it's dealing with and what it's working with. And the same can be said with 4.22. Now, right before they went to the F name pool thing, they changed the way that F names worked just a bit, but it's enough to break it if you don't account for that. Now, because this is only in 4.22 games, I have this option here. You can uncomment this out and you can set this to 1 if the engine is on 4.22, but it's not. So we're going to keep it as 0 and we're actually going to keep it commented out because it really doesn't matter, but yeah. So that is basically there, and you never want to touch that unless the game is on 4.22. You know, if it's 4.22.1 or 4.22.3, you want that. If it's 4.21 or 4.19, anything like that, you don't want this. This is a very rare scenario. So honestly, if you're going to make a profile file for a game, the only things you really need are these. You would need only these 9 times out of 10, because this basically says what flag this is, or, you know, the section, and these two are just basic, uh, these are basic systems that, you know, tell, oh, this is how the game works, we're gonna do it that way. But, to show that it works, we've just created our profile file, we're gonna press the save button, I've already done that, you're gonna go back to the mod loader folder, open up the exe, you'll see that it says waiting for the game window, and then you can just open up your game like normal, You'll see it do some of its stuff. Give it a second to load. And you can see we have, if I press F1, boom, we have support. This game now supports uh, the Unreal Mod Loader. And you can now begin to make, uh, you know, you can now begin to make shit. You can make your blueprint mods, your SDK-based C++ mods. You can mess around with some of these tools, you know, if you want to open a map or something like that. You know, whatever you decide to do. But, alright, that might have just froze the game. Oh, no, that did work. You know, dump objects. You can dump the world actors, you know, you can do whatever you need. But, yeah, that is how to base the very basis and basics of setting up a .profile file. And yeah, if it doesn't work for you, you have any questions, remember to hit me up on Discord, but this is the end to this part of the tutorial.